Thank you very much, Professor Thies. I'd now like to introduce our keynote speaker, Craig Fuller. Craig graduated from UCLA in 1973. In 1981, he went to Washington and worked as first uh, assistant to President Reagan for Cabinet Affairs and then as uh, Chief of Staff to Vice President George H.W. Bush. In 88, he helped get George H.W. Bush elected and chaired his transition team. He, a lifelong fan of aviation and piloting, he's currently the president of the American um, Association Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, a group which champions the rights of general aviation all over the country and in the world. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thanks for that uh, wonderful introduction. It's, uh, it's really remarkably nostalgic to be back here in uh, Poly Pavilion. I can't really remember how many years it's been. I can tell you, as a graduate of 1973, that you know what we did a lot here when you look at basketball champions 70, 71, 72, and 73. I want to uh, give my welcome to the families and the friends of uh, our graduates to the outstanding faculty that made such a difference in my life many years ago here at UCLA in the political science department. But most of all, I want to congratulate, welcome, and address the class of 2009. I also um, really appreciate the welcome of uh, Professor Keller, and I will tell you, Professor, it is very nice to be home. Thank you very much. You've honored me with this invitation. Karen and I arrived yesterday. We had a chance to walk around the campus, a much more developed place than it was when I was here, and a chance to enjoy dinner in Westwood. I grew up in Southern California, in the city of Arcadia. I enjoyed our beaches. I learned to sail here. I learned to fly in California. And I learned a great deal about politics here. Today, as you heard, my public policy focus is aviation, general aviation. I still fly my own plane, and I still work in this world of public policy. Both of those passions were very much forged here at UCLA. I hate to admit it, but it was 40 years ago that I entered UCLA. 36 years ago, I found myself sitting here completing four incredible years and graduating with a degree in political science. My four years here and the relationships I've formed have shaped my life ever since. The involvement in the department, in student government, even the UCLA Flying Club, made an enormous difference and a contribution to my life. I've always been interested in people, and so when I arrived at UCLA, I actually started as a psychology major. I found early on in my freshman year, though, that a psychology major would spend a lot of time dedicated to the study of rats. And as one interested in politics and public policy, I've moved rapidly and happily to political science. Although over the years in Washington, in politics, the study of rats was more valuable than I could ever have imagined. My education, as I'm sure you can relate to, occurred as much outside the classroom as inside the classroom. For me, a significant part of that outside the classroom portion centered on UCLA's government internship program, a program that I ran in Sacramento. Now, I'll be honest, when they told me that they wanted me to run the Sacramento program when I was in my sophomore year, I really had my sights set on Washington, D.C. Those days, there was a president named Nixon in Washington and a governor named Reagan in Sacramento, and Washington just seemed a whole lot more interesting to me. As a sophomore, I settled for running the Sacramento program for a year, and what a year it proved to be. I just kept going back month after month, indeed spent most of my senior year working on projects in Sacramento. The relationships I formed during that experience remain part of my life today. The people who helped us then in Sacramento went on to become friends and colleagues just a few years later when I went at the age of 30 to Washington to work at the White House. During those next eight years, I had the chance to serve the president and the vice president. Washington was 
the base for me, and, but the work with particularly Vice President Bush took me all over the world, to more than 60 countries, to every state in the nation during a presidential campaign. Having landed at the White House at the age of 30, I drew, drew on every bit of knowledge that I had gained from my years at UCLA. Ironically, many of the people I studied and learned about suddenly became available to me for advice and counsel at the White House. The White House is a remarkable place. The issues are, come with in, enormous intensity. In fact, no issue arrives at the White House if it can be solved somewhere else. Some of the nation's finest people come to the White House to work. I will tell you that many of the people are as intense as the issues. So was I adequately prepared? Well, I'm not sure anyone entering the White House is fully prepared for what awaits them. I can tell you that my experiences at UCLA were without a doubt the reasons that my life's journey took me there. And I can tell you on many, many occasions, it was the experience and what I learned here that helped me make contributions to the challenges we faced. I will never forget on January 20th, 1981, as the president took the oath of office, walking through the gates into the West Wing. I was in a small first wave of staff that went into the West Wing to prepare for activities later that day. I marveled at how well we do this in this country, a peaceful transition between two individuals who are leading the free world. We witnessed that again just a few months ago. While some entered those gates that day with considerable Washington experience, I had really only the lessons from UCLA to guide me and to suggest what might await me. It turned out those lessons served me very, very well. In whatever way it was acquired, I think my UCLA experiences helped me relate to a wide variety of people. And Washington has a wide variety of people. I always worked trying to relate to and understand the people I was dealing with and their point of view. I worked with leaders who exhibited this skill. They held strong convictions to be sure, but they always tried to relate to, peop to the people they were dealing with. So in thinking about my opportunity this morning to have the chance to speak with you, I, I thought about how to relate to you as graduates. And I thought of a story that I witnessed when President Reagan met with students a good number of years ago, and it's, it's, a, it's something I'd like to leave with you this morning. The President was asked by some visiting students a question. He was asked by them, how can you relate to us? My answer today paraphrases his, since I'm sure as you sit there, you wonder how I can relate to you. After all, you might surmise. You've grown up over two decades with so much that we did not experience, I did not experience when I was at UCLA. You've had laptops, netbooks, the internet, the World Wide Web. You've had cell phones iPods, MP3 players. You've had Seinfeld on TV, Star Wars in theaters, and the Harry Potter series. And maybe some of you remember, you've had a lifetime with the Cold War ended, the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the opening of the Berlin Wall. You've lived with the Space Shuttle, the Hubble Telescope, and the Inter International Space Station. And yes, you've seen our nation deal with the events of 9-11 and the assault against terrorism that followed. Over, you, over these years, you've seen the first woman appointed Secretary of State. You've seen the first woman Speaker of the House of Representatives. And you've seen the first black American elected president. <laughs> to all of you who are graduating today, I say it is absolutely true 36 years ago, I did not have these experiences shaping my life, as you do today. They were not part of my generation's experience then, for that would have been impossible, especially since it was my generation that invented the innovations, created the culture, managed the issues that helped shape your lives and your thinking. These are the things that my generation has been about for the past two decades. I share this not to boast, 
because we didn't do it always the right way. But much has been done well, and most has been done with the best intentions and hope for the best possible outcomes. My hope, our hope, all of us here today, your families, your friends, and your faculties, is for nothing less than your full engagement as you go forward. We want your fresh perspective. We want your innovative skills and thinking. We want you to focus on the challenges ahead, just as my graduating class did more than three decades ago. Albert Einstein uttered a wonderful description of insanity. He said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I know you have spent time here at UCLA learning how things were done in the past and what kinds of outcomes were realized. Take that learning into the world. Where results have been favorable, build on that foundation. But where results have been less than favorable, do not allow us to follow the same path only to discover another poor outcome. Today, more than ever, we cannot afford such insanity. All of us here look forward to seeing the history you create, the legacy you leave, I live every day believing that our future will be more exciting than our past. My past has been enormously rewarding and fulfilling since leaving UCLA. I look forward to seeing you create an even more exciting and more rewarding future in the years to come. To each and every graduate, thank you, good luck, and go Bruins.